it is hard. It's sad. It should turn hard to believe into sad so that there's compassion for the loss so that we will speak to the loss. Ladies and gentlemen, dogs and fleas, pull up a chair, sit on your knees, because we've got a story to tell you that we are still learning about. about. Welcome to Talk the Walk. I am Henry Moses. And I'm Brother Gabriel Moses. We are super happy to be here, and we do thank you for joining us today, wherever you may be. Wherever thou might Thou be art. I was I'll tell you what. Thou art. I'll tell you what, Gabe. I'm loving... The boom stands. The boom stand rocks. I think that's what these are called. Boom mic stands. Let's hope it's a boom. This is our second episode recording on these. And yeah, I can kind of, even in the head, headphones, I kind of hear a difference. I want to say that. Yeah. I want to say that. I know for a fact that other people say better. That was better. You can hear it more clearly. And I want to think I do, but I don't want to lie to myself. I'm like, maybe you're just thinking that. Maybe you're just thinking it sounds better because people told you that. Yeah. But it does sound clear. It does sound clear. It feels clear. It sounds kind of more professional. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Professional. That's the goal. The PPP, professional podcast people. Triple P. Triple P. Triple P. We're on our way to triple P status. (laughs) Let's Triple P certified. Can I have triple P status? Can I get a triple P can I get a what, what? A ranking, a high ranking yeah. triple P. I'm fired up. I do, I do need to make a, a clarification, a modification. This ought to be good. Gotta say I'm curious. An apologification. An apologification. For, apologification. for using a wrong wordification. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> which, which we were informed about. Oh, yeah. And they had fun informing oh, yeah. us. You know, that's the thing about, that's, big a, dummy. that's the thing about doing something like this. Be prepared because you're going to hear if you mess up. Oh, you're going to hear if you mess up, especially when you're one of five siblings. Oh, yeah. I guess we're two of five siblings, but yeah, we're going to hear. Especially if you're two of five. Yeah. So Jenny got me. Jenny got you. It was easy. I've been shot. Man down. Yep. Apparently, and I, I know what this word means and I know the right word I just used the wrong word apparently numerous times yeah you did I, I don't that. even know what we were talking about I Gabe either. I don't either you know but we were talking about something oh yes I do yeah we were talking about let me just make a correction we were talking about stupid musicals and we were talking <laughs> about <laughs> Chicago gosh I hate to even and Say that I was talking. I, I was talking Chicago. about how all that they do on there is sing. That's it. That's just a just bunch of singing. Singing foo fooey. Yes. There's no com- no. There's no conversation, right? And there's no and dialect. There's no any of that. There. No dialect. Yes. Oh no. Now we're gonna get another bad word in. Yeah. What does dialect mean? Uh, of, of of different dialects of languages. Yeah, no, that's yeah. what I was thinking when I said it. What's the word? <laughs> oh, no. Yes, dialogue. Good <laughs> night. There's I'm no like, dialogue. You're going to get us in more trouble. There's no dialogue. So We're not perfect. But look, that's what happens. You know, you were under the microscope here. What are you going to do? We're, Yo. try, we're trying. Yo, we're you trying. need to work harder. We're trying here. You need to be better. You so be I said step monologue. It up. He said monologue. I said monologue. Instead of dialogue. I forgive you. There. Yeah, I think Jenny forgives me too, but she, she's not going to let me scooch. Oh, no. Head, so. Too much opportunity so, to make fun. Jenny will be on here. And we'll see how she oh, do. Oh, that's right. We'll see how she do. Yeah. In fact, I might have a microscope set up, or, uh, uh, you know, just right next to her guest spot when she sits in here, just a, or a magnifying glass. I'll put a magnifying glass in there. Just keep her aware. Or is it a telescope? Under the microscope. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it a microscope, so, a magnifying glass? A that telescope? would be dialogue and not monologue. We're so sorry. I promise I'm an intelligent. I've got this. He knows stuff, Give y'all. Break. Be gentle. 
Be gentle. <laughs> Be trying. Uh, I told her, I said, I tell you what, I was like, keep keep talking like this and you're going to be doing some monologue. Because <laughs> I will not be here. You're going to be talking to the hand. I'm going to vamoose. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to adios you. We'll see you around, sister. Oh, it's just fun to call out people's stuff. It is you know, funny. You know, Especially when it's family. Your brothers yeah. decide they want to make a podcast about Jesus. Yeah. And so now that means... Fair game. Fair game. Hunting season's oh, on. I'm going to listen to every on. bit of it, and I'm going to call you. Which, to be fair, Jenny's one of our biggest supporters. Yes. She is one of our biggest supporters on it. And um, she by far doesn't just talk about our mistakes. You know, no. she likes to talk about the content, the, the content. Yeah. Yep. So, and which I love to do. So then, um, I also got got. This is what happens when your family listens. You know, <laughs> I got into a little bit of hot water with your wife. You yeah. know, because I made a joke about bonbons. It wasn't serious hot water. Nah. She hit me up and she was like, "Look here, if you're gonna talk smack." Get it right. Then get it right. Yeah. So I said something Stop about her French. sitting at home eating bonbons. <laughs> <laughs> and you Which, know what's funny about that? To be clear. I don't even know far, what a bonbon think, bon is. Have I ever oh, seen yeah. one? I've never even seen a bonbon. Yeah, bon they're bon. little, I think they're little chocolate covered ice creams. Mm. Oh, so like it's that. ice cream. Mm-hmm. My mind imagined marshmallows. Probably from the 80s. I don't even know if they make it anymore. Yeah. But. So she, so she said, she said, which is the farthest thing. This girl's a hard worker. That's why it's funny. That's why. And, uh, and she didn't take it personally at all, but it was funny because she did, she did shoot me a correction. She said, if you're going to, if you're going to be talking smack, get it straight. It's star crunch, apparently not bonbons. She do love her star crunches. She loveth the star crunch. And I love them almost as much as she does. They are good. Oh. Chocolatey, so crispy, caramely, right? Rice Krispies. Mm. I think they're Rice Krispies in there. Ugh. That's why I said crispy. Crispy. Yep. Yep. Chocolatey, crispy. So you're crispy, you're caramely. just taking a little apology tour. Man, that's the life of being me. Yeah. From time to time, you better <laughs> you better hop on that apology train and get with it. Get your humble pie but it was funny so i called her because i wasn't sure you just don't want to you just you just yeah. don't want to i mean i think i'm funny but not everybody thinks i'm funny <laughs> i think, I think I'm you're funny. funny okay at times most of the time in season give you most yeah. majority okay. of the time i, I appreciate think you're funny. that i appreciate that sometimes i just do this big pause yeah. yep oh yeah but yeah that was that one fell flat yeah <laughs> but it was it was so i called I did. I called. I called Carrie, and I thought I just don't want to even chance it. I talked about it with you this morning. Like I'm not above apologizing. Nah. Uh, if there's even a chance, it could. Now somebody just baby all the time. Oh, I'm no. like, no, you got to no, toughen no. up. But Carrie, not definitely not a baby. She ain't no baby. And so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and call her and talk to her. Yeah. I, at first, I was gonna shoot out a text. And say, hey, I just want to be clear on something. Yeah, you can't. Then get I it thought, no, no, text apology. Mm-hmm. Hmm, that only that's that's surface level. So I I called and you she, could. She didn't answer, so I thought, great, I'm gonna have to record an apology. So I did on the on even the, better on the on the message. I said, look here. Seen. I said the the good thing about this apology is anytime I annoy you from here on out, you can just play this back. That's right. And listen to me apologizing and groveling. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so she put it on repeat. Yeah, but she called back like it was like a two three minute apology, and uh, she called back after about probably about twenty or thirty seconds after I hung up the phone, and she goes, "Hey," she goes, "You didn't do anything. You didn't do anything <laughs> wrong." I was like, like, well, you know, I just started explaining. She goes, no, nah, I'm telling you, you didn't, you didn't do anything. I wasn't upset at all, offended at all. And she said, uh, she said, I listened to about, about 15 seconds and it was all I could take. I was like, oh, I had to turn it off because you your didn't voice do anything. Yeah. 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 Apologies. A good thing. That's a good, I thing. got no problem with it. I got six kids and I tell them, couldn't you have found something? That you could have said, hey, I could try to do that better next time. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you're saying I'm a great sinner. 
and I'm the worst of all the sinners. I'm just saying, find something. If the feelings well, I mean, got if hurt, Paul said it. I guess I can handle saying you know, it. You know, Paul, if he can do it. Yeah, he said yeah. I'm the worst, the worst offender. Yeah. So, I love Paul. Yeah, Paul's the man. He's. Thank yeah. you, thank you for writing Acts. For writing like two thirds of the New Testament. But Acts is so awesome. I just love it. It's probably my favorite book in the Bible. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm gonna go read it again. I do love some Acts. That's pretty good. And he wasn't perfect. I mean, it's funny the arguments they got into and all that. We've talked about that a little bit on here. It's funny. Uh huh. It's funny, but yep. Yeah, so. Carrie, I'm gonna make it even more awkward, and then here's an, here's me talking about the apology on the <laughs> actual show. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll probably have to apologize about apologizing. Yeah, I think you're good, brother. <laughs> I think now you got to do it in person. When you see her, you can do it in person, just to seal the deal. <laughs> you did it on voicemail. No, I'm gonna. You did it on telephone crunch. call. You've done it on podcast. For goodness sake, and like, now I'm sorry. Give me a hug and just give her a, po- a star crunch. Star crunch. Yeah, yeah star I like crunch. that. Yeah, yeah. Or a That's box of star crunches. Well played. Mm-hmm. A box of them. To bam. Yep. Yeah. Here's one for this one, and then all the rest of them are to cover future apologies. If, if you ever need to apologize to me, I'll take the uh, little Debbie strawberry uh, shortcake rolls. Siblings don't get apologies. That's, That's what I that like. Works. I'm going to go ahead and let you know right no. now. Our family ain't big on apologizing to each other. That doesn't happen very much. <sighs> We do it in a way without actually saying it. It's not true. Oh, that's so. You true. know what? I think you just like to think that. That's absolutely. That's not true. true. Yeah. Who's the last person in our family you apologize to? Me, probably. I apologize to people. <laughs> no, that you apologized to. Yeah, I just said that. Me, I apologize to people. You apologize to yourself. I, I to people. No, who in our family? Uh huh. Who's the last person in our family? Uh huh. That you said, I'm sorry to. That I said it to? Yes. Yeah. Probably you. Honestly. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like last week. We do. Talk, fact, that's true. You that's called me out yeah. on like four things that, that stuff, I disrespected yeah. you on. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm confrontation. Sorry. We were about I'm to sorry. do a podcast on pon- <laughs> confrontation, so I had to put it into practice. Pontification. Pontification. Pontrification. Pontrification. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I apologize to you like four times. And then, who? Let me see here. Boo never has to apologize. No, she don't really have to apologize. Once in a while, once in a while, hardly ever. But if we, like, if somebody comes and confront, okay, well, we're getting all off track. We're so far gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Second Timothy three twelve and thirteen gig. That's the one I'm gonna bounce with on my scriptures. Roll it. Roll that beautiful. Second, bean footage. Second Timothy three twelve and thirteen. Those who to deliver those who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. While evil people and imposters You got this. Will go from bad to worse. Yes. <laughs> while evil people sorry, my brain froze on me. While evil evil people and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's sec- Second Timothy is kind of talking about the the end times, talking about all that. Mm-hmm. Right before that, in Second Timothy, it was talking about what people will look like and act like in the ass, ass, day, uh, ass days, ass last days. Good night. What's wrong with my speech today? <laughs> was talking about what what things will look like in the last days. <laughs> um, and it's just this laundry list in the same chapter, Second mm-hmm. Timothy two. Um, or Second Timothy three, and uh, but what I really found interesting was it not just evil people. First, it talks about those choosing to follow Christ. It, it lets us know, hey, we're going to suffer persecution. But then after that, evil people and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving, and and will continue deceiving and being deceived. Mm-hmm. So they're blinded, they're deceived, but it's not just. It says evil people and imposters. Imposters of what? That was kind of the word for me that stood out. One, expect as a Christian, you're going to suffer persecution. Fakes. 
two, huh? Like, is it like fake people that are faking to be Christians? False That's disciples? That's the way I take it. Imposters. Imposters. Yeah, because right before that, in 2 Timothy 3, it's talking about, it is talking about, it's the scripture that talks about uh, people pr- putting on a front of being godly, but not having any power that goes with it. Mm-hmm. So that would be kind of imposters, you know, mm-hmm. put on put on this image of being godly, but not walking in the power of Christ. The wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's a but 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 that's just the really the you know that one that's what we can expect. We can expect persecution. I think if we're walking into everything expecting persecution, expecting persecution because we're looking to to live a godly life to represent Christ Jesus. We're going to do better. If we walk into something expecting persecution but get blessed or get a pat on the back or get a witness opportunity, whatever the case may be, then we're getting better than we expected. We're happy, happy. If we go into an expecting persecution and we get persecution, we're not caught off guard, right? Mm-hmm. And then if we expect evil people and imposters to go from bad to worse, to go from bad to worse, don't doesn't it seem like that's what we're seeing right now? Oh, Yeah. I mean, it does seem it's like evil people and imposters. I mean, you look, man, there's some people out there calling themselves Christians. Woo. I mean, I'm not sure where that fruit is. Let the yeah. let the tree be good and its fruit good, or the tree bad and its fruit bad. Right, right. As Matthew says, right? Um And judge it by its fruit. Now like yeah. Yeah. It's that's what yeah, I that's love it. about it. If somebody says, I am a Christian, yeah. It's either one of two things. One they haven't read the part in the Bible that says don't lie. Maybe they didn't get to that commandment. And they'd be lying. They're a Christian, but they'd be lying. And they need to be helped mm-hmm. by their other brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm-hmm. Or two, no. Nope, you're not a Christian. You're saying you're a Christian, but you're not a Christian. Your fruit does not speak to that. Mm-hmm. That's one thing to make an error, like trying to say dialogue and you say monologue. <laughs> Good point. That doesn't mess your faith up. Very good point. That doesn't mess your witness up. Yeah. But getting scripture wrong and interpreting it wrong on purpose. And using it wrong, yep. Having a discussion, iron sharpens iron. That's what we're doing here. I mean, we could we could get things wrong. Oh, yeah. I like it. Jace on um, the Unashamed podcast of the Robertson family, the Duck Dynasty family. Mm-hmm. He has a shirt that says, I could be wrong. I, I like that. Wrong. I like that for our... I like that for our podcast. We could be wrong. I was wrong on the monologue. I ain't wrong on much, but I was wrong on that. You know, you did pretty good. But I could, I could absolutely be wrong. That's the whole idea of this. We're discussing it, having a conversation about it. That's you know why I like that? But manipulate. I like that because it's like saying I could be wrong says I'm not perfect, which says I'm yeah. not Jesus. The furthest right? thing from it. Well, not the furthest. Satan's the furthest. But that's what it's saying. I'm not Jesus. Yep. Saying I could be wrong and saying I'm not. This is the same thing. The Texas version would be I ain't it. I ain't it. I ain't it. That's what I need a shirt that says. I I need a shirt that says that. It ain't me. I ain't it. Oh, no, no. I ain't Christ. I ain't the scripture. I am a representation. Okay. That's on that. That you is. That you is. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to go on mine now. John chapter 20, verse 22 and 23. And of course, you know, that's, that's the end of the, of his gospel that he wrote. And it says, and he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy spirit. This is Jesus talking, receive Mm -hmm. the Holy spirit. If you forgive others, they will be forgiven. Mm Mm-hmm. If you withhold forgiveness, it will be withheld. And I just love it because it's one, at the beginning it says he breathed on them. Right? Mm -hmm. What does that make you think of? The Holy Spirit. Well, for sure. But somebody breathing on somebody. Somebody breathing on somebody. Where else in the whole Bible did you hear that? I don't know. 
and he breathed life into the nostrils of man. Oh, okay. All right. God yeah. breathed yeah. into Adam. Yeah. And here right. it is again. And he breathed on him. I was like, this is so cool. I was like, oh, wow, I don't remember that. He breathed on him mm. and said, receive the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. which is just fantastic. And then, then he goes on and he's... What was that? John what? John chapter 20, verse 22 and 23. So towards the end when... Yeah, it's right toward the end. Okay. I think there's 21 chapters in John, I think. Okay. So that's pretty yeah. close. Or maybe it's just 20, but but yeah. Mm-hmm. So he breathed on them. And then the very next thing he says is he starts to talk about forgiveness, which what I love about that is this, being human's hard, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Don't you think so? Yeah. <laughs> it feels hard to me. It does. It feels yeah. unnatural. It feels like an engine that has eight cylinders and those cylinders are not firing together. They're working against each other like a bad engine. Mm-hmm. They would be working against each other and it just ain't working. That's the way life feels to me. Sometimes, of course, sometimes, man, we are, we are walking in the spirit completely. Mm-hmm. Tom but, Cruise, what was that movie? And the hits just keep on, on coming. coming. Is it McGuire? That's a few good men. A few good men. A few good men. So just keep on coming. I love it because Jesus is saying, he's like, okay, I know you're down here Mm -hmm. on earth. You're here on earth. You're amidst sin. Satan's attacking you. And the hordes of hell are marching. This is a tough place to be. But guess what? I'm going to give you the rules. If you forgive others, their, their sins are forgiven them. If you don't forgive, then you're not forgiven. Isn't that a clear cut rule? Mm-hmm. That's a, that's to me, that's saying, here's the rule. Mm-hmm. I'm giving you the rule. Here's the answer. Mm-hmm. Forgive. Go ahead and forgive. Now, I can't connect why he said receive the Holy Spirit and then he went into that part. But I do find it interesting that it is the order that it happened. So he breathed on him. Well, I just wonder how he, he breathed on him. Like, I do too. You got to yeah. wonder. Did he walk around the room? And I mean, grab their forehead and breathe on their forehead. You got to remember, he's God. I know. He could have went like this. <sighs> yeah, that is around true. the whole room. He could. Well, that's I mean, the only time you he's hear God. Him do it. It's so interesting. And I almost so if, with Christ. I, I'm telling you, he yeah. is. He is just. He's just so wonderful. And it's so funny, and we like to all just just like Adam and Eve. We like to think, oh, I'd have done it different if I was Adam and Eve, or I'd yes. have done it different if I, I was thought the it apostles. a thousand times. And you listen to the apostles, it's like, man. Terrible. Even after, which we're getting ready to break down, talking about the walking resurrection. Walking with God. You know, they're walking, they're, well, they're walking the walk to Emmaus, you know. They're sitting there yeah. walking with Christ, yeah. and they don't even know it, and they're kind of being a little, oh, kind of distraught, you know. <laughs> Did all this stuff, and Jesus ends up ripping them a little bit. Like, hey. Fellas, ladies. Yeah. To do get with the program here. I've been with y'all for three years, but we think, oh, I'd do it different for sure. <laughs> no, we always it. think that. I to this yeah. day can't help but think it. Yeah, I would not do that. If I, it's the children of Israel, and we got to get to it. It's the children of Israel walking through the desert. They just got delivered from Egypt after four hundred years, dude. Give me a break. Four hundred years. They they've been delivered, and. By the hand of God and ten plagues mm-hmm. that God put over mm-hmm. Egypt. I mean, they just saw all those ten plagues. They saw a Pharaoh crack under the pressure mm-hmm. of God and say, all right, go. Y'all are free. Mm-hmm. Then, I mean, isn't that enough? But then they're oh, going yeah. through the desert and they got a pillar of fire leading the way. Yeah. Coming down That's out of crazy. the sky. Yeah. And they still. That don't make They just saw the. The whole sea split yeah. in two. What in the world else do you yeah. need? I mean, I'd feel... I'd, so it's hard not to say, I would not build a golden calf. But you would. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. <clears throat> you might. Ugh, I can't imagine it, dude. Actually, we wouldn't. You know why? Because our name is Moses. That's right. Moses didn't build so no calf. So we wouldn't do it. We'd be the one... The brothers do Moses don't build calves. No, that's not how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Let's do this. But Gabe, so I, so I want to make one little clarification or one little uh, statement. Kind of a, yeah, just we were we're behind recording this hmm. Easter podcast. Yes, we are. Yeah, we goofed. So 
Uh, so this is going to actually end up coming out the, the Monday after. after, unless Miles does something and and miraculously gets it out the week of, which I don't think is going to happen. I don't think so. But whatever the case, there's never a bad time to celebrate. That's amen to the that. resurrection. Amen. Every day. You know what I'm saying? Every day. So we know that many times we th- we think we don't deserve what we're getting, right? I don't deserve this. I don't deserve that. It's not fair. It's not fair. Life's right? not fair. It when in fact, fair. we've talked about it before, we actually deserve worse than we're getting. I don't yeah. care what we're getting. Way worse. We actually deserve worse. We deserve nothing. We deserve hell worse. Yep. and eternity. Hell. That's what we actually deserve. Mm-hmm. So there was a time... Uh, that something happened that we actually truly didn't deserve it. And that time was the crucifixion, crucifixion and the resurrection of our almighty God. The closer I get to God, the more this day or weekend punches me right in the soul. The understanding of just how little I could do, just how little, nothing that I could do, do to deserve this. And yet... You know, we're 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 going about life. We're doing this and that, and then then Easter comes up on uh, once a year. And man, I don't know how many of us actually take the time to ponder and think of it. But I know this time coming around, Gabe, I'm so fired up for Easter. I'm so I almost feel like I'm walking in another dimension. Mm Hmm. I've noticed that from you today. Just thinking today. about, I just am, I'm just in awe. And I guess maybe it's because the more I serve, the closer I draw to God, the more I'm thinking about Him throughout every single day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's because of of doing this podcast. You have to dive in. You have to take time to think about these things. Yeah. And that's that's the best part of doing this. Or there's two. I don't know. It's tough because. Getting a new ministry to people that we may not even meet, that's an amazing thing. Getting to spread the word of God, there's nothing better than that. But the most important thing is is my relationship with God between me and him. That's that's the most important thing in my life. And man, the the just the the stuff that doing this podcast makes you think about. Yeah. It makes you ponder. Yeah. And so sitting there pondering this, uh, this Easter. I just, God, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, ugh. This morning I was thinking about thinking about it, and it just made me feel like throwing up, you know. The crucifixion? The, the, the recognition, yeah, yes. Or because the recognition of... How bad you are. This, that God Almighty, magnificent, pure love, would choose to gum down for my filthy self And die for me. It just makes me want to wither up because I feel so unworthy at the thought of it. And he did it with all confidence. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like there was some question in his yeah, mind or yeah. anything like that. With all confidence. It just makes me feel like Peter saying, Whoa, don't wash my feet. What are we doing yeah. here? You yeah. know, you can't do that. I am gross. I am disgusting. I'm horrific. Like anything bad you can think of, put that label on me and call it a day, mm-hmm. you know, in comparison That's to Christ. Me. Yep. Stained. We're undeserving mm-hmm. of this, of, of the greatest gift ever. Person given. Can and the crazy thing is that most people are going to reject that gift. That's always, you're, you hit the nail on the head there. I, I'll never, it's so hard to fathom it. But then when you go back to thinking about how people get lost, how they are lost. No one, no one poured into some of these folks. They didn't. They didn't tell them, "Hey, <coughs> Jesus died for you." Do you know that Jesus, God, came to Earth, died for you, and He also left you this mm-hmm. holy book for you to mm-hmm. guide you. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, they're just going year after year, being lost and getting worse. Mm-hmm. Like your, like your scripture said that you memorized. They're getting from bad to worse. Mm. 
They go from bad to worse, yeah. But yet we have we have received you and I have received salvation. We've received that freedom, so we it's hard for us to fathom living life without God yeah. in, in in our lives, guiding us, ministering to us in our hearts. And it's just it's such it is hard. It's sad. It should turn hard to believe into sad so that there's compassion for the lost so that we will speak to the lost. Right. And that's it. I mean, that's the, that's it. It, it, it. Hopefully there'll be a drop, man. Just thinking about Easter, think, thinking about how little we deserve it. Thinking about the wretchedness of ourselves. I love that, that movie or that movie, that, that, uh, the show that I listen to wretched radio. I I just love the title, man. We are wretches. All of us filthy in the nostrils of God. Our righteousness is, but then thinking about the resurrection and thinking about how these apostles, my brother, I think of Peter and how he must've felt because his, his last, his last at what point, with the before, right before Christ comes back, oh, when he did, so he's, not, oh, God, before he came, he's back. died. Yep, he's been crucified. Yep, and Peter dropped the ball hard three times. Christ told him he was going to do it. Drop the ball. Hard. You know, know, you just think oh, how they're feeling. The you think the way they're feeling, just <laughs> man, I'm the biggest piece of junk. You know, yeah. you're probably having suicidal thoughts. Probably, you know, we know Judas did actually no, go did. commit yeah. suicide. Um. Peter wasn't too far off from that. I mean, he betrayed Jesus straight up and calls it betrayal three yeah. times. Yeah. Three times. You know, that's the feeling that you're having, and he's gone. And now, so Luke 24, okay, you know, we were kind of talking about it and the, the different instances that we wanted to talk about of Jesus and his reappearance, which is what we're celebrating on mm-hmm. Easter. Mm-hmm. And Luke 24 really covers it. So I thought we'd just read these few sections out of Luke 24. Okay. Um, So I'll read a section, talk, read, talk, read, talk. Cool. Okay. The resurrection. But on the first day of the week, this again is out of Luke 24, at early dawn. So you think of the setting. You see the, it's, it's the sun's maybe just getting ready to come up. Stars are still kind of out. It's dark. It's been days. Your Savior's been gone. You're headed towards his tomb, right? Mm -hmm. They went to the tomb, taking spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their heads to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead. Yeah. Ah, that's good. Yep. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they stole all these things. They told all these things. I accidentally autocorrected that wrong. (laughs) They told all these things to the 11 and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale. They didn't believe it. It would be hard to believe. It's still, your mind's trying to grasp spiritual things. It's tough. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, but that. Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by the cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. I mean, it just, I love it. Peter bolted. I've got to see, is there a chance that I could be, that this could be happening? Yeah. That I can have the opportunity to apologize for it. And uh, I think I said that in a text this morning. I mean, I, just the thought, I shared it on our Facebook page what I did. But it, just the thought of the works that I can do are just a way that I can say thank you for your forgiveness of my sins. You think about... Just all the opportunities to, to say that, yeah. Yeah. 
You think about the fact our dad died in 2005. And would would it be nice, how many times have we said, if I could just have five more minutes? Five more minutes with him. Yep. Just to say whatever I want to say. And um, wouldn't that be nice if there's something yep. that you wanted to say, you know what, Dad, I did, I said this. Mm-hmm. Or I did that. Or whatever. I'm sorry. I, I wish I hadn't done it mm-hmm. and I was foolish and I love you you know Peter is sitting there I feel like he's the way you just described that I'm like yeah he probably was going give me a chance a chance to say I'm sorry that I was so mm-hmm. weak and so scared that I denied you so three self-focused times. three more times. yeah watching you go through the worst moment and yeah in your life, in your time your on this earth. Yes, yes. And I said, I don't know that guy. Ugh. I mean, that was the worst moment in the life of Christ for mm-hmm. eternity. Yeah. From no beginning to no end, that is the worst moment. Also the greatest moment. He's redeeming his children. But to carry the weight of all the sins of the world yeah. to the cross and the sh- and carry all the shame and all that, it's the worst moment. And Peter's like a hero. Peter's like deuces. Yeah, and I mean, God, God knew. Yeah, absolutely. God, God knew no all question. that. He's like, it's okay. But it's still hard to grasp okay. that. I think it's hard to grasp that, Gabe. So, I mean, with the I mean, we betrayed Christ, we do repeatedly. Mm-hmm. When we go out and we go about and we talk foolishly, we talk foul. Mm-hmm. You know, we're mm-hmm. representing God. Yes, yes. We're betraying him to people around us. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, well, I don't want to come across as a Jesus freak. You know, is that not a form of betrayal? Yeah. There are not times that, that you just think, God, I'm stinking it up. But you're right. God's not caught off guard by it. He's not. He's paid the price. We don't earn our salvation for work, through works. But we do got to do better. And that's what Peter's, you know, he's he sitting wants, there. Yeah. Why? I had the opportunity. I should have gone to the cross. And then when he died later, what did he do? He was executed on a cross and he said, no, hang me upside, upside down. I don't yeah. deserve. He had changed. He had grown. It is a process. But man, I just love it. He bolted. It says he took off. He ran. It said, but Peter rose and ran. I mean, he, that's what we have to do. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine, Solomon's uh, uh, mm-hmm. brother, Nick, passing away from drunk driving accident when I was 19. And, and I do, I remember driving down the road after getting the phone call all the way out to the outskirts of town where they mm-hmm. lived. And I was driving down that road and nothing felt real. Nothing felt mm-hmm. real. That was the first mm-hmm. time I, I experienced that, yeah. death. And I, I just... I got to imagine that the feeling that Peter must have had running to see him for himself, the whole run there, can you imagine? Could it be true? Could this be true? How many times have we woken up from a bad nightmare and said, thank goodness that wasn't Mm -hmm. true? Or how many times have we woken up and said, oh, yeah, this is this is true. This this did, is reality. This is reality. Mm-hmm. This did happen. Mm-hmm. It was one or the other, and sometimes good, sometimes so mm-hmm. hard you can't believe this is reality. And so that feeling of Peter running to the tomb, going, "I was just told Jesus is alive. Is he really gonna? Yeah, it's not like be it's there? like being able to wake up from a nightmare. Yes, yes." That was true. That was true. A true life nightmare and that you can wake up from. And only Jesus broke every rule and said, no, no, no. And I want to touch on this I'm too. I'm coming back, and I am back now. Before we move on to the next section. And I want to, one real quick, I love how the angels reminded them, don't you that's, remember? That's what that? I was going to oh, say. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. I just, I thought, yeah. I was like, even they are like, come on, guys. Why do you look for the living? Among, among the dead. dead. <clears throat> it's such a phrase of victory. It is. Christ is risen. 
Yeah. Why do Why do you look for the living among the dead? And They're he like, hey said guys, I got he was going to do you. this. They're like, hey, yeah. remember he said yeah. that? He told you. Why don't you believe him? Why don't you believe? And it's it's so convicting. Why don't you believe? What more yeah. do you need? Why do we look for life among the dead? Among the dead. Don't focus on death. Focus on the life of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on, on things that lead to death, on financial struggles, on on physical struggles, on all these different types of things. You're good at quoting Focus that one. Focus on the life. What's that one? Fo- meditate on all that is good and... and all things good, all things pure, all things commendable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus on these. Focus, Focus on the on life. This. Focus Don't on this. Don't look for the living among the dead. <laughs> on the road to Emmaus, verse 13. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus. We've been on the road to Emmaus. <laughs> the walk. The walk. <laughs> Different Emmaus, yeah. Yes. About seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were, were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what's this conversation you're holding with each other as you walk? Kind of reminds me of our buddy Jamie. He just jumps in. <laughs> and they stood still looking sad. So... They're still not fully believing it. They're walking. I love this one. They stood still looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him. Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? (laughs) He's like, like, dude, do we even have to explain this? And he said to them, what things? She's like, just come on. What things? Tell me about it. He knows where he's going with this. They said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And now, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. When they did not find the body, they came back and said they had had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb, found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer those things? And enter into his glory. And beginning with Moses and, the, and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So he had a Bible study with them, them not realizing it's Christ. Saying like, okay, I'm going to go over this with you again. <laughs> so they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if they were, he acted as, if, acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us. For it is toward evening, and the day is now spent. They're like, this man, this dude is teaching us things. He probably is reminding them of who he actually is. And they're like, don't go away, don't go away. We need comfort, and you're bringing us comfort. Get with us. Eat with us. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Kind of reminds you of the Last Supper. Mm Mm-hmm. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did our hearts not burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. He just makes me want to think of brother. That just makes me think of the, all the different times that Christ is right there with us. Mm-hmm. We're going through our deep, dark times 
and we don't even realize it. We don't even recognize it until it's smack dab in our face. Carrie and I were just talking about something kind of along these lines last night. And uh, we were saying that there's, there's some things that God did up at Hillside uh, over the last couple of days. Which is y'all's church. Mm -hmm, Where we Mm -hmm. go to church. That's our church. And, and, uh, Carrie described four or five different things that were just Mm -hmm. amazing. And I said, and that's how God works. That's God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to start to recognize him when you see him, when, when you, when you see things happen that just somehow magically all lined up. No, that's God. That's him. And it, and it made me think of that movie. Um, that is the song Jesus in disguise. You know that song? Mm -mm, I don't think so. Sing it. Jesus in disguise, Jehovah passing by. Da 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 da. A a king you would never recognize, Jesus in disguise. So anyway, it's it's Jehovah passing by. It says. Uh, and the, and the, the whole song has just got different points that you don't recognize that it's God until you do. And you got to be recogn- – the more you know God, the more you will recognize mm-hmm. him. You will know how he moves, how he works. You have a relationship with him just like you and I do, mm-hmm. just like anybody listening and their sibling or their parent do. You recognize how they move, how they talk, how they walk, all the things. We get to know God more and more. And – these guys didn't quite recognize him right there when he was mm-hmm. standing right in front of them. Yeah. And then they did recognize him, and then uh, that breaks my heart. But then he disappeared right after they recognized him. I'm like, oh, God. And he does nothing without reason. Nothing without reason. Everything is purposeful. The whole thing that he yeah. is... They're, he's like, hey, yes, your leader. I'm going to let you think on this, on what just happened. He's like, the leaders yeah. did take him and do that. You fools, didn't you know that's the way this had to happen? This all had to happen. So he's not mad about anything. He's like, this is the way it was supposed to be. But you'll see it. You'll see it more and more. Yeah. Right now, you just don't get it. That was sure did. And it's encouraging because we don't always see it in the moment. That's what's nice. He does that. But this is a time, this is a season to recognize, to, to man, let our spirits be excited. Yep. Yeah. I love it. And I'm going to, I want to read these lyrics, Gabe. To, or I might let you because I've been doing a ton of reading. But yeah, let me read. To Sunday's on the way by Carmen right. before, right. before we shut this down and we'll, we'll post it. Well, what? Uh, oh. We're not done. We got well, no, no. I'm just saying oh, before okay. before it's. Over. I was like, we still got one more no, other no. Yes, encounter. We, we got yeah, we got. Here. But before, and we'll post the song. A lot of people may or may not have heard this song, but it's called "Sundays by, on the Way" by Carmen, and it, and it's about Easter essentially. You don't want to. You don't want to post Jesus in disguise. We can do that too. <laughs> you can do that if you're on Facebook and social media. It's not going to happen. <laughs> well, it's going to happen. But we're love, not getting into that right Love now. to all. All right, let's press on. But, but it's such a good, just be aware. Jesus is with us whether we realize it or not. Yeah. He's walking with us. Yes. He's with us. The right now. Prince in the sand. With you. He's with us. With you, always. Jesus appears to his disciples. Verse 36. Okay, so you're not reading that song yet. No, no. I'm oh, okay. let okay. you read that. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said unto them, Peace be you. And poof. He poofs, and poofs appear. And poofs disappears. He poofs appears. <laughs> poof. It was a very poofy kind of a moment. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. I mean, even after all this, they're just struggling to get on board here. Right. Thought they saw a spirit. There's no way. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why... Do doubts arise in your hearts? Like he's just having to scold them left and right. Come on, guys, let's get with it here. Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet. That it is I myself. Touch me. See, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? 
They gave him a piece of broiled fish. He took it and ate it before them. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of our sins should be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things and behold, I am sending the promise of my father to you, but stay in the city, but stay in the city until you are closed, clothed with power from on high. I just love it. He shows up. He eats with them. He opens their minds to the scripture, to understand the scripture. And I love that. I mean, they'd probably been reading the scripture. Mm-hmm. They haven't memorized. I have no doubt about it. They'd been in the scripture. I don't know if they had to memorize or not, but they'd been in it. Yeah, I bet you they did. But look, had they, did they have a full grasping of an understanding of it? Clearly not. No. You know. No. Clearly not. Um, well, and you think you think them, you know, they had scrolls and they had all this stuff, and then they would scripture would be read to them in in uh, the temples, and I don't know how many of them actually had scrolls at the time. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, but did they have a full grasping of the understanding of scripture? Not. They'd walked with Christ for three years, didn't? Still, then he opened their minds then here, and then he's getting ready to send them the promise of the father, the Holy spirit, you know, it's, it's been, it's this continuing, but it's encouraging. in that man, you may have been walking with the Lord for a long time. Don't think you have your full understanding. Yeah. The Lord can still open your mind to understand better. Mm -hmm. His promises, his mysteries. I love it when people have epiphanies about God. You want to hit some because it, it always seems like it takes years for people to have these epiphanies. And it makes me think, you know, these guys having their eyes open and stuff and God, God putting the, the word on their heart. It makes me think of, uh, uh, when, you know, the movie, the case for Christ, what's that guy's name? Uh, Lee Strobel. Lee Strobel. That, that part at the end, the whole movies, he's struggling bad. He can't stand God, mm, hates so God, good. hates the mm. whole concept, yeah. which to him is a concept. And his wife's doing everything. She's walking with the Lord now. She's received freedom. And at the end of the movie, he has he's looking at all his evidence because that's all he understands. He can't understand mm-hmm. anything but evidence. And then it hits him. Oh my gosh, it's true. It's all true. Ugh, I mean, what do you do? Yeah, what did he do? He cried like I'm crying yeah. now. It's all true. And then he put all the the facts aside and said, "Now I'm going to talk to you, God." And his wife led him in the prayer. And now he has a relationship. Oh. And you ain't I, kidding. I went yeah. to listen to him preach. <laughs> That's all he'll ever do. Once yep. you know God, once you know him, yep. once you find him, and you it's can't life alter. Yeah. yeah. You can't fake that. That's the biggest thing about somebody who gets healed by God. They're gonna talk about it for the rest of their life. They can't help I mean, it. It's split They've been healed. time in half. Yeah. As we measure it, Christ yeah. Christ coming to earth. Divided time. I always imagine him when he came down, like it says, he got up off his throne. Mm-hmm. And you just imagine that, that moment that he stood up to come here to do this. He was sitting at his throne. And then he stood up and said, Now I go. Now I'm going to come down and I'm going to give them what they need understanding, truth, mm-hmm. correction. I just, I, it's just the most powerful image in my mind. It's going to open up uh, their eyes. Yeah. You know, him on the cross. Of course, we take communion 
every Sunday at church. And of course, my mind always goes mm. to that moment of him on the cross and him being resurrected. Mm. But mostly he's always on the cross whenever I take communion. And I just, it's the most powerful moments that uh, we remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the key thing to remember, Gabe, is that we're un- we can't deserve this. And, and it's so encouraging. It's inspiring. You know, we cannot deserve it. We're undeserving yeah. of the greatest gift ever. And yet it's offered to us. We don't have to take it. We don't have to. Have it. And it's bad news bears if you don't take it. No. But we also... What do we deserve if we refuse to take it? The greatest gift ever that we don't deserve, and then then we get what we deserve. Then we then we do get what we deserve. Separation. Yeah, we don't get him. That's it. You don't get him. He's he's there. Yeah. Behold, I stand and knock at the door of your heart, and then some don't answer. But if we walk with him in it walk with him consistently intentionally why would we not you know be let's be like the disciples who after went on to change the world yeah to spread the gospel well there's that's such our calling in him. we say that at the end of every podcast but that is our calling mm-hmm. is to go and spend every second that we've got Thanking him by serving him well. You'd have to look at it and go, hey, say you've got a family member who's in a maximum security prison. Mm-hmm. And you you said you have, you have the ability to go with the keys and open up those doors, walk straight into that person's cell <clears throat> and tell them you're free. And they've been there for years, 20 years, 30 years. And you say, guess what? You're free. I have what's needed for you to be free from here. You can leave this maximum mm-hmm. security prison of torment. Accept Jesus into your heart. Let him free you from sin. Mm-hmm. You're free. Go. You can walk out the door. No one will stop you. Yeah, because the freedom you experience is, is, is even though the, the scripture that I read earlier in Second Timothy says we're going to be persecuted. That's going to happen. But you can experience freedom through persecution. Mm -hmm. You can be walking in freedom even in the midst of persecution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Uh, you should be. You think of that, the movie Risen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mm -hmm. who was it? Mary Magdalene, I think, that's sitting there and they're, they're talking about... We could, we we're going to do this. Go. We're going to do all this bad stuff to you, but we have the power to release you. We have the power to set you free is what he says. Mm-hmm. And she's just looking off. She's looking out and she just smiles and she says, I am already free. I'm she's already right in the free. middle of persecution. I'm already free. I'm already free. That's right. You are already free. Whoever's listening to this podcast, you are already free. If you have embraced Christ, if you have accepted a sacrifice, you're already free. And, Sunday's on the way. <laughs> Sunday's on the way. Sunday's on the way. Why don't you hit us with some lyrics? All right, I'll read this. Oh, just the whole thing? Just the okay. whole thing. Just the whole thing, okay. The demons were planning on having a party one night. They had beer, Jack Daniels, and pretzels. There was red wine, some white. They were celebrating how they crucified Christ on that tree. But Satan, the snake himself, wasn't so at ease. Well, he took his crooked finger and he dialed the phone by his bed to call an old faithful to see if he was dead. Hey, Grave, what's going on? Did my plan fail? Grave just laughed and said, The dude's dead as nails. On Friday night, they crucified the Lord at Calvary. But he said, Don't dread, three days later... I'll live again, you'll see. When problems try to bury you, make it hard to pray. It may seem like Friday night, but Sunday's on the way. A tranquilizer and a horror flick couldn't calm Satan's fears. 
So Saturday night, he calls up the grave, scared of what he'd hear. Hey, Grave, what's going on? Grave said, man, you done called me twice. And I'll, and I'll tell you one, one more, more again, boss. Huh? The Jews on ice. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> one more again, boss. The Jews on ice. Satan said, man, Grave, you remember when old Lazarus was in his grave? Everything was cool. Then four days later, boom, <laughs> old Lazarus was, old Lazarus, he was raised. Now, this Jesus, he is much more trouble than anyone has ever been to me. And this man said he only going to be dead for three days. Sunday morning, Satan woke up with a jump. Ready to blow a fuse, he was shaking from the tips of his pointy ears to the toes of his pointy shoes. (laughs) Hey, Grave, is he alive? I don't want to lose my neck. Grave said, Satan, you're a wreck. Cool your jets, Big D. My sting is still intact. Jesus is dead forever. He ain't never coming back. So mellow out, man. Just go drink up or shoot up. Just leave old grave alone, and I'll catch you, la la. Uh Oh, oh no. I'll catch you, la la, later, he was about to say, but then he gets interrupted. He interrupts himself. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Somebody's messing with the stone. Well, the stone was rolled away. And it and it and it ounced. What is bounced. that? And it oh, and it bounced. Yep. And it bounced a time or two. And an angel stepped inside and said, "I'm Gabriel. Who are you?" If you're wondering, <laughs> it's hard to even read. If you're wondering where the Lord is at this very hour, I'll tell you, He's alive and well with resurrection power. Jeez. Read the chorus one more time. Which one's that? Where's that at? On Friday night, they crucified the Lord at Calvary. Oh, there we go. On Friday night, they crucified the Lord at Calvary. But he said, don't dread. Three days later, I'll live again. You'll see. When problems try to bury you, make it hard to pray. It may seem like Friday night, but But Sunday's Sunday's on the way. way. Amen, amen, and amen to that. Ah, Sunday is on the way, y'all. We're recording this. It's going to come out later. But we're recording this before, and I'm just yep. telling you, this just has me fired up. Be fired up. Be fired up. That and Sunday's not all only on the way, but it's coming. It's gone. It's here. Yeah. Lives it's in here. Us. Every it lives day, in us. Sunday is here. Resurrection Sunday has come and gone, and we are free. 365. 365. And therefore... Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. That's right. I'll say it again. (laughs) Let's make it happen. Let's pray. pray. Dear God, we're so thankful for your sacrifice that we don't deserve. We're thankful for your goodness and your grace through our flaws. We ask your forgiveness of our sins. We ask that you help us to represent you well, Lord. We love and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Scope here. What are you gonna do? Yo, we're, try, we're trying. No, Yo, you trying. need to work harder. You need to be better.